Good morning, church. Good morning, Mount Zion. If you would, uh, I'll ask you if you would to, uh, you be, can you turn your down? <laughs> if you would uh, hit your like buttons or uh, send me a comment so I know who's there. Can't see who's there. But anyway, we're just grateful to be here today. The Lord has blessed us to come together again. <laughs> what a great day it is. Amen. <clears throat> You'll hit your share button, share with others if you would. Invite them in. Well, there we go. Now I can see. Took me a bit. Sister AJ, Sister Lily, Lily D, Sister Pat, Sister Deborah, bless you. Reverend Ken, good morning. Yes, please share it with others. This is Renee up in Minnesota. Bless you. Debbie Gaskin, God bless you. Good to see you today. Divian, good morning. Yes, welcome. Sister Robinson, bless you. Real Chris, good morning. This is Latasha, Pastor Johnson, and Johnson. God bless you both. Ms. Johnny, God bless you. Asante, Dr. Nita, bless you. Good morning. Tracy Sue, good morning. This is Pearlene, bless you. Vivian, good morning. Sharon, Camp, Kevin, good morning. What a day it is. God has blessed us too. This is Memorial Day. Well, tomorrow is yes, Reverend, uh, but it's uh, it's a it's a great day that we're here. I'll give you a few minutes, if you would, uh, to uh, Damien. Good morning, Sister Ivy, Minister Candice, Sister Alma. Good morning, Sister Shirley J. Good morning, Georgia. Brother Craig, he's want me to say thank you to Brother Craig. That's Camilla. Amen. Good morning. Thank you to Brother Craig Davis and uh, Brother Wendell Booth. Brother Craig is uh, helping us to do this broadcast by uh, Meetvio. And uh, Brother Booth is helping us do it by Facebook and YouTube. So we're grateful for that. Sister Connie, Sister Linda, Sister Sarah, good morning. Amen. Linda, McMahon, Francis, good morning. So what we'll do is uh, there's a couple of announcements I want to make before I start. And, and that way I, I uh, make sure I get it in on the early part and on the back part as well. Uh, this coming uh, Thursday, May 28th, uh, Deacon Porter and Sister Clella, Deacon Marvell Porter and Sister Clella Porter 
will be se celebrating 71 years in marriage. Thank, I want you to hear that number again, 71 years. They've been married, husband and wife, 71 years. Get your mind around that. <laughs> Amen. But that's the 28th. Uh, they're going to be celebrating, uh, uh, as I say, this, this wonderful uh, anniversary. Brother Greg, good morning. This is Janet. Good morning. Praise God. Uh, and also on Wednesday, Wednesday from 11 to 1, we're going to have, uh, we're going to do, we got what we call hobo boxes. Uh, Hungry Hobo is doing these special boxes for us, lunches. And so that's from 11 to 1. We're going to do 100. And so we'll pr provide those until they're gone. So that's starting 11 o'clock uh, this coming Wednesday at Mount Zion Church. Amen. Sister Drusella, good morning. Cynthia D. Glade Dean, good morning. Makara D. Linnell. Selena, good morning. Burley, Joyce, amen. So I ask you, to, uh, that's my neighbor, Sheila, uh, niece on there. Amen. Good morning. All right, let us pray. Father, we thank you for our gathering here today. We praise you for all that you've done for us and for giving us this opportunity to meet by this means of technology. And, and we pray that you would just give us a special word to be a blessing to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, what I want to ask you to do is turn to Acts chapter 9, as well as Acts chapter 9. We're going to look at verse 6. And Acts chapter 13 and verse 13 and verse 9. Acts chapter 9 and verse 6. Here's what it says. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go unto the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. This is Acts 9 and verse 6. Then we go to Acts 13 and verse 9. Acts 13 and verse 9. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. Then Paul, excuse me, then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. Now, now what those two verses have in common, the connection with those two verses, is what I want to share with you today. I want to raise a question. I want to raise a question with you. And I want you to raise a question with yourself. In Acts 9, in verse 6, Paul says, Lord, what will thou have me to do. And I want to have, have you raise the question with yourself, who is me? That's, that's our subject. Who is me? Because when we get to Acts 13 and verse 9, Saul transitions to Paul. But when he asked the question, and Acts 9, Lord, what would I have me to do? At that point, he is Saul. Right? And so the reason I want, I want to raise that question is I've been, I've been sharing with you the, the necessity of each one of us having a sense of purpose and mission. Because in the midst of this coronavirus, there's so much stuff that we don't know there's so much misinformation on all that. And, and without question, this coronavirus is a deadly virus. And so you're wondering about how do you best guard and protect yourself? And I'm sharing with you, you want to follow the wisest things of, of uh, you know, social distancing, hand washing, and wearing the mask and all that. But ultimately, you really can't guard yourself from this virus. But if you have a sense 
of mission and purpose and God has given you an assignment, then you can trust that God will watch you, protect you, and keep you all day, all night. No matter what the circumstances are, how bad it is, he will have you covered. So that's why I've been focusing on the sense of each one of us having a sense of mission and purpose in Christ. Now, so 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 when, when we look at when you look at the uh, Acts nine when you look at Acts nine at first uh, six and and, and and Saul said, Lord, what will I have me to do? And I'm asking us here the question: Who is me? The reason I raise that is that have you, are you sure you are who you are or have you been copying someone? Uh, you know, sometimes we can, we can be copying someone else without realizing, without even realizing we're really copying them. And you end up really being a bad copy of them and haven't even scratched the surface of who you are. And so that's why I raise that question because when 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 Saul, uh, when the Lord stops him on the Damascus road, and the Lord says to him, uh, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he says, Who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus. And then when he says, Now watch this, the Lord says, I am Jesus, but he calls him Saul, Saul, not Paul, Paul. He calls him Saul. So that means, so, so Saul has, he's, uh, he's from the tribe of Benjamin, and his parents has named him, gave him this name when he was born, the name of Saul, who is the first king of Israel, and from the tribe of Benjamin. And we see uh, in, the, in the book of Philippians that Paul celebrates the fact that he's from the tribe of Benjamin. But check this out. So you go back to Israel's history, and they had come out of Egypt. God had brought them out of Egypt. Moses had led them. Then Joshua had led them into the promised land. And they were to have God as their king. And Israel wanted to be like all the other nations, and they wanted a king. And the situation came uh, which God uh, said to Samuel. He says, he said, they really, they, they really don't want me, but I'm going to give them a king. So what happened was, in 1 Samuel 9, you want to read at your, at your leisure. But for the longest time, we were under the impression that, that the people chose Saul as their king. But that's not true. And in and, and 1 Samuel 9, it says, God spoke to the prophet Samuel and told him in his ear that tomorrow I'm sending you a man. And he sent Saul that they would anoint, that, that Samuel would anoint him as the captain to lead Israel. Now, my brothers and sisters, here's what makes that so important. At the time that they wanted a king, the tribe of Benjamin were outcasts because they had mistreated a Levite. You'll find this in the, in the last two chapters of Judges. A Levite came to the land of Benjamin, and there he was mistreated by the, by the Benjamites. And he had a, the Levite had his concubine, and they sexually assaulted his concubine. And the Levite wanted vengeance on the land of Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin. So, so he sent word to all the tribes together. And they went up to Benjamin and said, send out the guys who did this to the Levite. And Benjamin said, we're not going to do it. So they, all the 11 tribes attacked this one tribe of Benjamin and killed everyone down to 600. Only 600 remained. And then the 11 tribes wept because they had almost wiped out a tribe. And so they recognized we, we want to restore this tribe, but they put themselves on a curse that Benjamin was was uh, uh, was was despised at this point. 
So here's what happened. So they figured out how to get Benjamin 400 wives, and they were 200 wives short. So they said, his, his, so they said to Benjamin, said, listen, we didn't put ourselves on a curse that we can't give you our daughters, but we're going to have a festival, and you hide in the bushes. And when our, when our daughters come out and dance, then you, you jump out and you catch you one, and we won't chase you. That way, we, we won't, we won't uh, we'll still be on the, 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 you'll still be cursed, but at the same time, they were trying to make sure their tribe didn't get wiped out. The reason I want to share it with you is this. So from that point on, so they got to watch, so they, they were able to capture 200 wives. And, but the tribe of Benjamin was this outcast tribe from that point forward. And then when Israel said they wanted a king, God looked over to this outcast tribe of Benjamin and went down into the lowest family in Benjamin, which was Saul's family. And he tapped Saul that he would be the king of Israel. And so when Saul was made king, it raised all of Benjamin up, all of the, the outcasts, all of the despised that went with that. That was no longer true because Saul now was the one who was the king. Now David was the guy that was the one that God had in mind. He was the one that God had. He said, he's a man after my own heart. But, but, but Saul's purpose was to remove this black mark, this mark, this stain on the tribe of Benjamin. And when he did it, then Saul's name was famous. So, so we, when you move forward in history, so when baby Saul is born from the tribe of Benjamin, his mama and daddy named him Saul after the first king of Israel. So he has a famous name, all right? Now, but think about it. So Saul, so baby Saul is named after the first king of Israel. He, his name is famous. He's named after a king. But baby Saul, so we have the name of the first king. Saul would never be a king. He would never have the high seat of authority and power. But he's named after a king. That's his name. His name, he, his name already carries with it the life and history of someone else. So when the Lord says to Saul, 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 uh, why persecute thy me? And Saul said, Lord, what would I have me to do? At that point, he's considering Saul. But the point is, who are you, Saul? At that point, you know who Saul is? He's a bounty hunter. He's a bounty hunter. If you look at it, go back to Acts, uh, look at Acts 9. Look at Acts 9, verse. Uh, well, Acts 8. Acts 8, verse 3. And, and as for Saul, he made havoc of the church entering into every house and hauling men and women, committing them to prison. This is Acts 8 and verse 3. So at this point, he is, he is his, his mission is to go around finding church members and arresting them and putting them in jail. This is Acts 8 verse 3. Acts 9 verse 1. And, and Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter, against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of the way whether they were men or women he might bring them bound unto J Jerusalem so at this point Saul is the king of, of catch him and lock him up that's who he is so when he said no well, me so at, at this time me means I'm a, I'm a bounty hunter I'm I catch people who, who worship you. I, I lock them up. I make sure that they are put in jail. That's who me is for Saul. In other words, at this point, who me is for Saul has some baggage. In fact, his baggage has some blood on it. 
So when you say me, what does that mean? Now you remember, we, we read that Acts 13 verse 10, right? It says, and then Saul, who is also called Paul. Now listen, go, go to Acts 13. I want to show this. Show this. I want to show this. Let's go to Acts 13. Acts 13. I want to begin at verse 1. Now, there was in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, Lucas of Cyrene, and Manian, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, watch this, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. So the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul. Now that's verse two. Seven verses later, Saul becomes Paul. So the Holy Spirit said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, and seven verses later, Saul becomes Paul. I need to repeat that one more time. The Holy Ghost said, not separate me Barnabas and Paul, but separate me Barnabas and Saul at verse 2, and seven verses later, then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him, and said, all full of suddenly and all mischief. I don't want to get into that. I just want to stay with his name change. Because, because at this point, at this point, the name Saul has a history, but the name Paul has a future. Let me say it one more time. At this point, the name Saul has a history, but the name Paul has a future. When you when you consider when you consider that 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 Saul was Jewish, Saul was his Hebrew name. But Saul was also a Roman citizen. He was born in, he was born as a Roman citizen. So he had a Hebrew name, a Jewish name, Saul, after the first king of Israel. But he also had a Latin or Roman name, Paul. And up to this point, Saul had lived the bulk of his life under his Hebrew name, a Jewish name, Saul. All of his records at this point, everything he was doing at this point, was based on his name, Saul. But then when the Lord says, I have a work for you, and that mission was to minister to Gentiles, even though, even though he's not ministering to Gentiles, his, his name, Saul, has a history. And every time that name, Saul, came up, all the baggage came up with it. I mean, it filled the room, it filled the living room, the dining room, it got on the table, down the hallway. I mean, it was out in the yard. I mean, all that, that name had all kind of baggage and had blood on it. So he, he, he couldn't properly minister if he continued to drag that baggage. So he starts to use his Roman name, Paul. All right? Now, now observe this. The Lord didn't change his name from Saul to Paul. It doesn't say that. It, no, the Lord didn't change it. He already had the name Paul. He already had the name Saul. It's just at this point, as he begins to move out into his new ministry, he couldn't do it with his old name that he had lived his life under. He had needed to do it in this name of Paul, of which he, he had been named in, but hadn't, could, hadn't put up a record in. Now, why is that important? I said last week and the week before that Jesus had a perfect life. He, he didn't have an old life. He didn't have stuff in his past of which, you know, Ben and I could bring up for, to him. And because Jesus had to be perfect and pure in order to redeem us and pay for our sins, he had to have a clean, perfect life. 
But the problem is, is that we couldn't jump right in behind and follow Jesus because most of us got a name with some baggage. So the Lord knew that. And he saves the apostle Paul. He saves Saul, and it says he saved him that he might be a pattern. So Saul becomes a pattern, and he begins to show us how to put off the old man and put on the new man because he draws a line with his old name, Saul, and the new man, Paul. Help me, Lord Jesus. See, the thing is, you cannot pursue what God will have you do if your history is blocking you. Because what happens is, see, 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 Paul says, he says, I tell all this stuff on my record, all the stuff I've done to persecuted the church and, 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 and people were killed. He, he authorized the killing of folks. All that was on his record. He said, but the Lord forgave me. All right? Someone looking at me now. You, 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 you know, we've, you've been in the church for years, or maybe you've been trying to, to function at a different level, but your old name keeps getting in the way. And you wonder, well, how did I get past this? Paul, Saul, is our model. Saul is his old life. And Paul is his new life. I first, uh, I first understood this. And listen, I, I, I really understand this. And so, uh, we're to watch Paul. But let me tell you, uh, let me tell you my experience. I was born in 1955 as Prentice Wonder Harris, <laughs> and I grew up as Prentice Wonder Harris. I went to grade school. I graduated from high school graduated from college as Prentice Wonder Harris. I got married as Prentice Wonder Harris. But then in 1977, I went to work for IBM, and IBM changed my name to PW. And I was PW Harris at that point. Not that I changed it, but IBM changed it. So I was PW Harris beginning in August of 77. And then in August of 86, got called to Mount Zion Church, and Mount Zion elected me as Peter W. Harris. But then in the year 2000, I began to recognize I still wasn't who I ought to be, but I didn't know what the problem was. And I came across this understanding from the Apostle Paul. And I started going by P. Wonder. Now, let me share this with you. I was scared to change my name to P. Wonder. I want y'all to know that. But I knew I needed to disconnect from the old me to the me that God would have me be, and I didn't know who that me ought to be. And here's what happened. So you've been so many of my family members and members of Mount Zion, you 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 will you walk with me through this journey. So that was 2000. I started going by P1. Look up in prayer came in 2003. Uh, Getting rid of may I, can I, and somebody using what objection came in 2005. Singing the books of Bible forward and forward and reverse came in 2006. I could go on and call a lot of other things, but a lot of the things that started to happen in my life and in our church happened after 2000. Because what I recognized before 2000, there was a lot of things I was doing that I was actually copying other people and not actually becoming the best me that God had called me to be. And so from 2000 forward, I stopped looking around to other people to see what they would do or judging and measuring myself by other people, but started to say, Lord, what would you have me to do? And I didn't have it as clear as, that, as I have it now. Well, oh, my God. See, I've had from 2000 to now, you know, 20, 20, that's 20 years. Hello? So a whole lot has developed since then. And so now I know what I'm talking about. I know, I know that, I know it's important that you be able to draw a line between who you used to be and who you are now. And since Paul is our pattern, if we're going to watch Paul, let's learn something. Let's, let's, let's get something from watching him. And what he shows us is that in order for you to move forward in who you are in Christ, you got to let go of who you used to be 
And here's how he does it. He tells us in Philippians 3, when you get a chance, read Philippians 3 for yourself. He says, he says, if anybody to, to glory in the flesh, it should, it should be me. I was Hebrew of the Hebrew, uh, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. And he goes on and he says, but all that stuff I gained, I counted it as loss that I may win Christ. And then he said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, wait, 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 wait. When you get to chapter 4, he says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Now, that's Paul talking. That's not Saul talking. Because once he got rid of Saul, and now understand who he is as Paul, and now he has a future, and the, see, Saul's story has been told. But Paul's story hadn't been written yet. And so my point is, see, see, you can't let your old story get in the way and block your new story. Some of us here on this, on this, in this session, you know, you got some stuff you've been through, and, and I don't know who you are, but, but, but just, just think about it for a minute. You got some stuff that you've done on been through family members, friend, friends, kin folks, they all know you as Bug, June Bug, whatever the, your name is. Fred, he said, Well, I've been Fred all my life. And I've been Frenicia all my life. Well, that's the problem. Because all your life, every time you want to do something, all of Fred's history comes up. All of Frenicia's history comes up. And so you want to be able to pray with that thing instead of being Fred. Maybe you're a Fred Jr., a Fred A, a Fred B, or one of your middle initials. Or instead of being Phrenicia, hello, uh, use your middle name or kill the, a combination of the name that you already have. And that becomes the line between who you used to be and who you are now. Because what I found with me is P. Wonder, P. Wonder had no history but just the future. And therefore, I did not allow what I couldn't do or hadn't done get in the way of what was possible. Help me, Lord Jesus. Because, see, if I said P.W. and Prentice, I say, you know, Prentice can't sing, Prentice can't do this, and P.W. can't do this, I had a whole history of stuff that I said I couldn't do. But when I started operating by Pete Wonder, I said, well, hey, I, I can't look what I hadn't done. I just look forward to what God could have me do. And my brothers and sisters, that's what I offer to you today. Saul and Paul is our model. He's our pattern. And he says, he shows us the way you make a break with the old person and then have a clear understanding of who me is. Because your old life is not you. Your old life is your history. But your old life doesn't define who you are. It, no, no, no. That's not who you are. That's not who God has called you to be. You, you did a whole lot of stupid stuff in your old name. Yep, me, Lord. You, you did a whole lot of wrong turns in your old name. That's all you had one eye open and one eye closed. Hello? Couldn't hear, couldn't see, wouldn't follow the structure. A whole lot of stuff you couldn't do. Didn't know how to do. And so, and so long as you keep that, and you say, well, what would you have me do? Then you're going to let all that stuff you did in the past get in the way. So someone today you need to have a break with your old name. You still using your old name, but instead of using it the way you you want to you want to switch it up some. Maybe use the initial, then your middle name, or your 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 first name and your initial. I mean, work with it some kind of way to 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 change that thing so that you got a break. Then change your voicemail. Hello. So when people call, they say this. Uh, they expect the printer to get. Hey, this is P. Wonder Harris. Well, who is that? That's what you want. Because, because what happened is when they get the old name, they're gonna start bringing all that stuff up. Now you don't get you don't have amnesia. Let me get that straight now. You don't have amnesia. Well, you say, well, I don't forget. No, you, it's still there. But the new name has a future. And the old name has a past. And the Lord came to give us a future. 
And so each one of us here today, if you just recognize that Jesus came to give us a future, but we didn't know how to get rid of our past. So he said, I'm going to save a guy and put it in front of you. And then you watch him, how he moves from Saul to Paul. And I'm not going to be the one changing that. He's going to do it. But, but, the, but, the, but, but the, the transition is what gives you hope for your future and a remembrance for your past. But you got power now in your new name in Jesus Christ. Now, that's all I got today. But my soul is at me because I know most of you here, you want to you wanna disconnect from your past. You want to engage the future, but you don't know how to do it. Well, there it is. It's just on the table. It's there for everyone to see. Change your name. You start walking in a new name. It's your same name, but you're using it different. And then God will do great things through you. That's all I got, brothers and sisters. Someone here today, you need to keep this in your note. Some of you, maybe you just got out of jail. And, and your jail name was whatever it is. Well, don't use the jail name now. Change the name. Use your same name, but use your initial. And that becomes your new stuff. Maybe some of you have got a divorce, and it just is killing you. Well, someone, you just have, what's your heartbreak? What's your breakup? Through whatever it is. Maybe you just, whatever your situation is. It's time now to have a break with the old you and then start the new you. If you've been Fred all your life as a Christian, as a believer in Christ, you're still dragging your old baggage with you. You might need some water with that. Because you don't realize you're back, you're dragging. Because all of your friends, everyone you know, they're still calling you by the old name. And every time they call you, they can bring up stuff from your old name. So that's why you need the break. And that gives you a chance to have a name that has a future. And there's no limit to what you can do. And then you, then you say, Lord, what do you have me do in your new name? Not your old, because your old one is covered by the blood of Jesus. But in your new name, you move forward in what God had you do. Every preacher, every minister that's listening to me now, you know, you keep you keep going by your old name, and they remember you. Yeah, we used to go to the club, we used to do this, we used to do this. And so you might now remember as, as a minister, as you and not just minister, ever believe in Christ. You want to you want to do something different with your name. And that's how you're able to say, Lord, what would you have me to do and not have the me of your history block you from your future? Oh, brothers and sisters, I pray the day that each one of us would rise higher in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift this congregation to you. And I pray, God, that you would just have your way in our lives. May we see freshly that Paul is our model. Saul is his old life. And Paul is his new life. That each one on this service today would be able to draw a line so that they too can, can get a fresh start with a new name, knowing that they can do all things through you. The Lord have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I pray for, I ask now if you are listening today and, and you're already a believer, but you're looking for a way to, to start fresh. You want to give your life to Christ, that's first. But maybe you say, well, Pastor, I don't know what to do with my name. Okay. Text me, send me an email, pwonder at pwonder.org. pwonder at pwonder.org. And I can give you some guidance about how you can work with your name to, uh, to, to have a, to draw a line between who you used to be and who God would have you be. Use, use your own name. Use the name you have now. But there's a way to, there's a way to work with that name. And then, and then change your voicemail. Uh, you know, change your email. You don't have the same email since AOL come out. No, get your new email. Get your, change that email. So, so all that changes, it draws a line between who you used to be and who God would have you be. Amen? Yeah. All right. Praise God. Oh. Uh,
are covered by supporters. Their uh, anniversary coming up Thursday, May 28th. Please keep that in mind. And then on Wednesday from 11 to 1 is we're doing the uh, uh, lunches uh, from Mount Zion Church from 11 to 1. Amen. Let's see if I guess I got here. I think that's it. All right. God bless you. So, oh, this is, uh, we got one more. No, this is our last Sunday. We got one more Sunday made up. No, this, we, one more. Anyway, before I go, I want to say happy birthday to all the May people. All right? All the May birthdays. Here we go. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, happy, happy. Happy birthday, 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 happy, happy. Birthday, 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 happy birthday to you. Amen. God bless you, Mount Zion. Oh, I want to cover this, that we do have electronic giving now. So you're able to go on. If, uh, Brother Wendell posted it on Facebook. You can go on to uh, Venmo or Cash App. And I don't have the exact terms right in front of me, but you can go there and uh, uh, look on the Mount Zion Facebook, and it has the uh, how you would search for it on Venmo or uh, Cash App. And, and, of course, we still have the secure drop box for uh, tithes and offerings as well. But keep those things in mind. God bless you, and may God bless you real good. Take care. Bye-bye.